Good morning. I'm in Milano this morning, uh, the financial capital of Italy. And <laughs> Italy, as you know, is the third largest economy in Europe, but it's also the one country in the entire world which has the most mega banks on the brink of trouble. Take, for example, this bank that's right behind me, uh, Unicredit, which is uh, rated D by our own Weiss ratings, which means that it's a much higher probability of failure than any other bank in most other categories. And it has over $1 trillion in assets. But it's not the only one. Banco Popular has $139 billion in assets and is rated D-. Banca Monte del Paschi di Siena, with $197 billion in assets, is rated D-. Intesa San Paolo, with a whopping $797 billion in assets, is rated D+. And as I said, Unicredit, with over $1 trillion in assets, is rated D. Now, if the Italian government could easily come to the rescue, it might not be such a big problem. But the Italian government itself has more debt in proportion to GDP than any other country in the European Union except Greece. Or if the European Union could easily come to the rescue of the Italian economy like it did for Greece, then maybe that would at least postpone the day of reckoning. But that's also virtually impossible. Why? Because Italy's public debts are eight times larger than Greece's. Italy's economy is ten times larger. And Italy's banks have far more assets in jeopardy. In other words, it's wrong to say that Italy is too big to fail because, in reality, Italy is too big to save. But can Italy save itself? This week, I spoke to our friends here in Italy along with average citizens from all walks of life. And when I asked them if Italy can save itself from the next banking crisis, the answer was nearly unanimous and it was very shocking. They said it will be extremely difficult for Italy to save itself. Luciano, for example, is an astute businessman and investor from Viareggio in northern Tuscany. And he has some very strong views about the obvious dangers ahead for Italy and all of Europe, for that matter. In the U.S., Luciano says, you have Donald Trump. Here, we have Beppe Grillo. <laughs> Trump is a professional businessman, and he's not funny. Grillo is a professional comedian, and he's even less funny. His political movement, which is called the Five Star Movement, is now the most popular party in Italy. And he wants to abandon the European Union precisely when we're going to need the EU the most, concludes Luciano. Another good example is Elizabeth's old friend, Giuseppina, very warm, kind-hearted, retired office manager from Piacenza, also northern Italy, but not hesitant to speak her mind. And she talked mostly about something else, about poverty in Italy. And I quote, even before any new financial crisis, she says, poverty in Italy is the worst in at least a decade. There are almost 5 million Italians living in what is officially defined as absolute poverty. Plus, there are more than 8 million living in, quote, relative poverty. In this context, most average Italians don't understand the big fuss about Brexit. It's the crisis in Italy, they say, that could really destroy Europe. What will be Judgment Day for Italy? According to Luciano and Giuseppina, it will probably come this year, probably in October, because that's when the prime minister is holding a constitutional referendum. If the referendum passes, it will end the Italian government as we know it today. If it doesn't pass, the prime minister will have to resign, and either way, Italy will face political turmoil precisely at a time when its banks could be facing financial ruin. We knew 
from news reports that the situation in Italy was deteriorating rapidly. But now that I'm here and I've had the opportunity to talk to Italian citizens from all walks of life, I can tell you that it's actually a lot worse than we realized. Look, this could be the epicenter of the next debt crisis, not only in Europe, but globally. Right now, it's driving capital to U.S. markets and will likely continue to do so for a while. But at some point, that capital flow may reach a dead end. And in the meantime, my recommendation is unchanged. Invest in extreme high quality and with great caution. Above all, continue to build your cash assets.